Welcome to the very first episode of Jet to Immortal series. In this series I'll try to reach Immortal by only playing Jet and showcase you a lot of pro tips, tricks and strategies. The goal is to have the absolutely highest win rate while teaching you some high elo knowledge that you can abuse to rank up faster. I plan to do this type of series with every agent starting with Jet and Omen. Consider this series like an in-depth agent's guide that you won't find anywhere else. Also, during this series I'm making the agent playbook with the best jet executes and tactics for every single map in ranked solo queue. You can access this playbook and all of the in-depth guides on my Discord server. All of these games are streamed live on my Twitch channel and you can join me on this journey where I'm trying to improve the whole Valorant community. Because as you already know, I've got Radiant in every episode from close beta, I'm one of the most experienced and oldest Valorant coaches and I truly believe that anyone, yes even you, can improve in this game, reach Radiant and become a professional player. So let's start the placement matches and see what rank we will get. This is pretty basic, but a lot of jet players don't do it. Always use one of your smokes for the top of choke point and second smoke onto the bomb site where you want to go with your dash. First smoke is protecting you and your teammates from the random peaks of enemies, allowing you to safely execute the site. And the second smoke will protect you once you dash into it and give you the time to pull out your gun and then engage the enemies. Both of these smokes will put huge pressure onto enemy team, allowing you to engage them from different angles. Here? No? Let's take the site. Launching smoke. Where's the Reyna, bro? Careful, no one behind. Spike planted. Where's the Reyna? Bro, teammates are leaving me. Behind. Never panic when you're low HP. I knew Reyna was low HP and the right click would most likely kill her. Plus, I had the dash so I jumped peek her to have the most chances of surviving this duel. One enemy remaining. Clutch. <laughs> oh. Jumping on top of the double box is a pretty good angle since it's really used to surprise enemies peeking from window. Because of the chaos knife position, I knew he was on the left side, either close or on C long. I pushed out and took the side control only to see my teammates rotated on A. Pay attention on the minimap since comms can be missed due to you being in the action at that moment. You know, tunnel vision is real. At the end of this round, enemy jet decided to save, which is a really bad game decision since she will only get plus 1000 credits for the next one. This is a totally bad economy management in an eco second round. If you somehow manage to get the jet ultimate all the way into the bonus round, it is also okay to give the weapon to your teammates and to use the knives like for example i can give the specter to the sage sage you got the specter and now i can just play the knives here i heard the enemies ran and then suddenly stopped so i figured they are in the smoke waiting to peek out together or with a flash radiant game sense my friends After jump spotting and finding out the enemy jet position, my brim decided to ult her. From the ultimate position on the minimap, I figured out she couldn't have ran all the way back, so she had to be in this corner. Jump spotting mechanic is something that you should frequently try to use in your gameplay to reveal enemies' locations. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Overall, you know, it is what it is. It's very helpful if you take notes of enemies' habits and patterns. This match, I noticed they like pushing garage doors quite a lot, so I was ready for this guy. Bro, what? Easy read. Shadows traveling. Where the fuck is my omen going? Walking site. After entering the site and killing these two guys, I remembered my cypher was killed by Reyna near garage and my Reyna pushed the B link. So I was 100% certain that Reyna was in this corner right here and I just got an easy read on the flanking A player. He's A player, he flanked. Okay, second game done. Can we play something that is not Haven please? When left alone versus many enemies, try to single out duels one by one and slow down your gameplay since they are likely to overpeak or to do something stupido. Discipline is very important in Valorant. Spike down B. I got the spike. 
Here I spotted a single pixel of the neon and after being left in a 1 vs 1 I faked my rotation. But this bait was actually bad because I didn't have time to actually rotate. Viper should have known better. 30 seconds left. When playing with your knives as jet, you can use your updraft and dash to peek over smokes or walls to gain info. And that's how I got this easy kill on Viper. Here I brought out the shorty to take an easy close range kill on the neon, because she was preparing to zoom into the site, but unfortunately I fat fingered my escape button. If you're playing without a harbor bubble or a sage wall, you really need to clear or at least gain some information on the B site before you commit planting the spike. Otherwise, you're gonna get spammed, wall banged, and both you and the little wingman are donezo. Spike down B. One enemy remaining. If you're playing Viper, make sure to use your ultimate when you have some kind of a cover, because this first skill of mine was crucial to easily win this round. Welcome to Give me those back. Give me those back. Enemy spotted B. Hey, say, say, say. Spike down B. Uh. One enemy remaining. Four. This guy is behind us, you know? Pay attention on when and how you're using your utility, because even immortal players have a bad utility usage. First ace of the series! First ace of the series! In this round, I wanted to execute on top of a truck and to surprise enemies in the lamps from behind. I intentionally push from top of these boxes with Updraft and Dash, because I've noticed that enemies have Cypher, but my timing for utility was completely off. Spike down A. After executing A and killing one guy there, I saw two more enemies around the site and that the lurking omen was killed. So I called for the fast rotation and I'm staying behind to catch the enemies off guard. Here I decided to reposition through elbows since Neon will spend some time searching on the site for me. After killing Omen, I knew A was empty and that it was safe to run for the plant. She's running for my ass. 30 seconds left. And I'm planting in an open spot so I can easily play multiple post plant angles. Although I whiffed like a boosted gorilla, I can still win the round by playing on the spike detonation. <laughs> Victory! Okay, 4 0. Seconds left. If you're ever in a 1v2 post-plan situation, you should always get an offensive angle first and try to get at least one pick, especially with an operator. Here I noticed they are not coming from heaven and since it's taking them so long, I realized they both must be flanking from a main. One enemy 
remain. Also, don't be afraid to use your jet ultimate even when you're 1v1 to secure the round. Here I had operator, Sage knows my location, and my peak would have been very slow and risky, especially if I missed the shot of the operator. The main point of ultimate abilities is to give you higher chances of winning. Don't save them for some perfect moments that might never come during your game. Every round matters in Valorant, remember that. This is the El Clasico jet entry on A site of Ascent. You dash into your generator smoke and push out from the left to right, clearing the whole site. Make sure to do left and right flicks in the middle of your dash to clear as many angles as possible for your team, because jet dash is also a recon ability. After these two kills, I decided to aggressively peek again to surprise enemies, because my dash got resetted and I can get away easily, even if I miss the shot. But to be honest, this was unnecessary overheating. Since I have a shorty for this retake, I need to strike before enemies take a bomb site and to help my killjoy. So that's why I push after I hear them running by on stairs next to me. Always use your abilities to close the gap with the enemies as best as you can when you're playing the close range weapons. Remember when you're out of bullets, there's always a knife option. One enemy oh, remaining. No. <laughs> Last player standing. <laughs> Now you're probably asking, but charlatan, why are you retaking B-side with a shorty in the first round? I was doing my famous classic pistol shorty ascent strategy on a side, but I forgot to save the classic at the start. Charlatan LeBron's James. Win. Okay! Somehow the Where the are we starting? Our journey. Our coaching journey starts at... Platinum 1. So, in this first episode, we won all five placement matches, and we are starting at Platinum 1. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and join my Discord server for private development coaching. And I'll see you, my dear tricksters, in the next one, baby.